I held a lot of stereotypes in my head about Minnesota, but I also had a pretty large black hole where Minnesota information might have been if I had given Minnesota any thought at all before actually moving here. My name is Mary Schumann and I am a realtor here in the Twin Cities. I make videos to help people who are trying to figure out where to live in the Twin Cities and what to make of Minnesota. If that describes you and you're thinking of moving here, feel free to reach out with any questions that you might have because you are exactly who I want to help. My contact information is right down below this video in the description box. All you need to do if you're on a mobile device is go ahead and tap the title and it will open right up for you. All right, disclaimer, we love living in Minnesota. I'm probably gonna get ridden out of here on rails for this video, but I am still going to do it. I am not a native. I've lived in Ohio, Michigan, Atlanta, Georgia, Chicago, Illinois, and now I'm here. So I'm just coming at this with the view of an outsider and I am sharing it with you. So my number one thing that we noticed right away was pride. The first thing that struck us when we moved here was that Minnesotans are extremely proud of their state. As I mentioned, I lived in several other states and in none of them has there been this level of state branding worn by the residents. People wear Minnesota gear all the time and I don't mean gear just for the sports teams, although <laughs> I mean that it's like school spirit day every single day because people wear clothing and hats, put bumper stickers on their cars, there is Minnesota themed artwork in their homes, you name it, all proudly proclaiming that they live in and love living in Minnesota. It is everywhere. Also, Minnesotans do not tolerate a less than favorable comparison to another state very well, even if it's just a little hint of one. If there is any glory to be had, even if it's tied by the very finest of threads, they will mention it. So for example, if somebody does something notable and their uncle's in-law's cousin once removed is from Minnesota, well, that's good enough. Minnesota can lay claim. I really like it here too. I think a lot of this is somewhat justified, but this is a video about what stood out to me as an outsider, and it's a very noticeable trait when you're not from around these parts. One of my friends that are Minnesota born and bred explained that Minnesotans are a little sensitive about being in flyover country. It's a little out of the way if you're from the coast, and it hurts to have your exceptional light dimmed by the fact of geography. The place has a lot going for it, and if you know, you know. But if you don't know, you may be tempted to step in it a little bit and not give credit where Minnesotans believe that credit is due. If you're on Twitter, I'm gonna recommend that you follow the account Indignant Minnesotan. Whoever this person is really gets it, and it's pretty funny to read. All right, so number two is infrastructure. One thing that I was surprised by and am now ecstatic over is that the infrastructure of the Twin Cities and the entire state as a whole is built very intentionally around helping people enjoy being outside. It took me a while to put my finger on it, even though I take advantage of this nearly daily. It's just so easy to be a part of the natural beauty and lakes that surround us here. Whether it's on foot, on bikes, or in the water itself. Chicago did have some of this on the lakefront, but Minnesota has it everywhere. It feels like Minnesotans are born feeling that being outside and having easy access to it is their birthright. I absolutely love this characteristic, and I can't believe how deeply integrated this is into most of the state, at least the parts that I've been to so far. There are bike trails absolutely everywhere, city, suburb, or exurb. The lakes are an extension of the way that people live here, and a lot of parks have ways for you to enjoy the water, whether it's through the beaches, boat rentals, paddle boards, keeping the lakes cleared in the winter for skating and pond hockey, or making them accessible for fishing. Much of the northern part of the state is forest or borders on Lake Superior, and the parks and cabins that are available for spending time outside up there are extensive. Trails are used year round for hiking, fat tire biking, skiing, or snowmobiling. Okay, number three is cabin culture. This one isn't too much of a shock based on the last one, but cabin culture here is strong. 
people clear out of the city pretty much every weekend through the summer to head up to the cabin. The cabin. All summer long, your social media feeds are gonna have photos of people having fun outside at their lakes and cabins. We don't have a cabin, but I imagine it would be really nice. In the meantime, I'll just be here in Minneapolis enjoying fewer people at the things that I do wanna visit. Okay, number four, the weather. Everyone thinks cold when they think of Minnesota. What they don't tell you is how ridiculously hot it gets here in the summer. The month of July is like a sauna. Super humid, super hot, it's just gross. I am a cold weather person. I like to enjoy moderate days and the sun for a few months, but cold weather makes me happy inside, so July is not my favorite. I like to tell my friends and family in Ohio when they start talking about how awful our winters must be here, um, that it is actually about 10 degrees colder in the winter and 10 degrees hotter here in the summer. Most states talk about snow days for school and you aren't really likely to see that here. Kids go to school in the winter. The potential for kids being called off of school for weather is more likely to occur in the spring when it gets warm or in the early fall when it's still hot out. And kids start back to school and they might get a heat day because many of the schools have no AC and it's just absolutely intolerable in there. We do get the occasional day called off for colder snow too. Minneapolis Public Schools calls school off when it is minus 35 degrees Fahrenheit or colder with wind chill, or if there is an extra large and fast snowfall, and whatever you imagine this to mean, double it. Okay, number five, the fair. Minnesotans are obsessed with the state fair. They call it the great Minnesota get together. They love the rides, the crowds, the Pronto Pups, AKA Corn Dogs, and the Sweet Martha's Cookies. People will go to the State Fair multiple times during the week that it's running. This is not an inexpensive endeavor. If you're headed to the fair, your best bet is to ride one of the buses from the various park and rides rather than trying to find a place to park. It is a relatively inexpensive ticket and you can get there and back very easily, pretty much whenever you wanna go. So I, don't love the fair. I keep trying. I worry that there is something wrong with me, but then I think I can't be the only one that doesn't love it. There's got to be more of us. I think we all try to keep it to ourselves to avoid the gasps of astonishment and confusion. I mean, it's not personal Minnesota. I just don't like huge crowds. But if you like being smushed together with vast swaths of Minnesotan humanity, I suggest you give it a try. The one thing I do love about the fair is the annual crop art competition, just because it is so Minnesota and so creative. It amazed me the three times that I went to the fair, but now I look at photos instead, so I don't need to be near all those people. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you don't want to miss any more of my hot takes on Minnesota. Have a great week.